All right, so now we're getting into multiplying two terms. So in the first video, we looked at what we do with a term that has an exponent, how we differentiate this. And then in the last video, we looked at how we, maybe we can add these two terms together or subtract them. So in this video, we're gonna look at what happens when we have two terms that we multiply. So the standard way we can look at it is one term we can look at as F and the other term we can look at as G. So how we deal with these is that if we have F multiplied by G, right, we need to differentiate this. This will become the derivative of F multiplied by G plus F multiplied by the derivative of G. This is a really simple example. We don't have to do this, but just to keep the logical steps clear, we're going to use it for this example. So what we need to do is we need to start defining our terms. So F we know is X to the power of four and the derivative of F, which is F prime, the derivative of F is four X to the power of three. And then we have G is equal to X to the power of three. Now the derivative of G is three X to the power of two. Okay, so now we have, we have our terms and uh, we can find the solution. The first one is F prime. F prime is four X to the power of three and this is multiplied by G, which is just X to the power of three plus F, which is X to the power of four times G prime, which is three X to the power of two. Okay, so now we can solve this and it'll be four X to the power of six plus three X to the power of six, which is just gonna become seven X to the power of six. This will be the final solution. If we follow these steps, so we define our terms and the derivatives of our terms, so we can follow this rule, which is the product rule. All right, so try and solve these problems and then uh, we'll go through the solutions. All right, so in the first example, let's define our terms. So we have in brackets, this is F, and then in the other bracket, we have G. So if we go F is equal to X plus one, and then F prime, the derivative of F. So if we look at this, X will just become one and one will become a zero. Okay, so we're just left with one. And then we come here and we go, G is equal to X minus one and G prime, G prime will be equal to, and it'll be the same. X becomes one, negative one will, will just become a zero. So we're left with one. Okay, so the rule, remember the rule is F prime G plus G prime by F. Okay, so F prime is just gonna be one, and then we have G is X minus one, plus we have G prime, which is going to just be one as well, and that's multiplied by X plus one. Okay, so now we can just simplify this expression. Now it's just algebra, simple algebra. On this side, this, it just becomes X minus one plus X plus one, and the two ones will cancel out, Two ones will cancel out and we're just left with two X. So the next one, we have two terms. One term is five T and the other one, we need to consider it as two T plus three. Okay, so we have F is equal to five T. F prime will just be five. G is equal to two T plus three and G prime will, so the two, two T will just become two and the three becomes a zero. So it will just be two. Uh, just for good practice, it's always good to write the rule. So F prime by G plus G prime by F. So F prime is five times two T plus three plus two times, this will be five T. So now we can put it in this form. Okay, so uh, 10 T plus 15 plus 10 T. And then the final solution is just 20 T plus 15. And this is, this is the final solution. So the next one, um, F is equal to six X to the power of three plus X squared. F prime is equal to 18 X to the power of two plus two X. G is equal to four X squared minus three X to the power of three. And G prime is equal to eight X minus nine X to the power of two. So now we have our terms. So just keep in mind that these terms need to be multiplied. Okay, so we're gonna end up with a lot of, a lot of terms. 18x to the power of 2 plus 2x and this will be multiplied by g which is 4x to the power of 2 minus 
3x to the power of 3 plus g prime which will be 8x minus 9x squared multiplied by f which will be 6x to the power of 3 plus x squared so now you could probably see if we skip some steps we can easily make a mistake all right so now we have the full expression now we need to multiply all the terms so what we'll do we'll focus on this expression first and then we'll focus on this one all right so we have 18 by 4 which is 72 x to the power of 4 uh, 18 by negative 3 should be negative 54 x to the power of 5 plus 8 x to the power of 3 minus 6 x to the power of 4 okay so now we have this expression so then we can go plus this will be 48 x to the power of 4 plus 8 x to the power of 3 minus 54 x to the power of 5 minus 9 x to the power of 4. All right, so now we have our full expression and now we can add or subtract any terms with the same power or the same exponent. So the highest exponent that we have is 5. So we have a 5 here and a 5 here. So then negative 54 and negative 54 will become negative 108 x to the power of 5. Then we have the 4s here, 2, 3, 4. So it'll become 105 x to the power of 4. And then 3s, we have two 3s. So 8 plus 8 will just be plus 16 x to the power of 3. This will be our final solution. All right, so for the next one, we have f is equal to 3x squared, uh, f prime is equal to 6x and then we have g is equal to x 1 over 2 and g prime is equal to 1 over 2 x to the power of 1 over 2. All right so now we have our terms we can just use the product rule. All right so let's go 6x times x to the power of 1 over 2 plus uh, g prime so will be 1 over 2x to the power of 1 over 2 times uh, f 3x to the power of 2. From here now we can simplify this so we have 6x to the power of this will become 3 over 2 plus 3x squared over 2x to the power of 1 over 2. All right so now we have 6x to the power of 3 over 2 plus all right so if we look at this this term here we have this x squared divided by x to the power of 1 over 2. We need to subtract these exponents. So if we have 4 over 2 minus 1 over 2, we'll be left with 3 over 2. This will become 3 over 2 x to the power of 3 over 2. All right, so now we can simplify this further. We can add these two terms together if we make this a 12 over 2. So we'll have 12 over 2 x to the power of 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2 x to the power of 3 over 2. So we can add these two together. Right, so we're going to be left with 15 over 2 x to the power of 3 over 2. So this will be the final solution. All right, so now we have the last example. All right, so with this last example, what we need to recognize is that we have three terms. So we have f, g, and here we have, we can say h, right? So we have three different parts, f, g, and h. So, so the product rule, what it's going to become now is if we have f by g by h, this will become f prime by g and h by g by h plus um, f g prime h plus f g h prime. Okay, so the logical way of looking at this is seeing it in this form. Okay, so let's do the same thing we did before and let's define all our terms. Um, f is equal to x plus 1. f prime is equal to just 1. g is equal to x minus 1. g prime is equal to 1. h is equal to x plus 1. h prime, we've defined each term really clearly and now we can we can write our expression. Okay so we go f prime is 1 and that's multiplied by x minus 1 and h x plus 1 plus so we can move the g prime to the front just to, just to make it easier to see. So g prime is 1 times 
plus 1 multiplied by x plus 1 plus, and then we have h prime is 1, and then we have x plus 1 by x minus 1. Okay, so now we have our expression. So now we can write our solution. We don't have to worry about the 1. So it's going to be x squared plus x minus x minus 1 plus x squared plus x plus x plus 1. And the final one will be x squared minus x plus x minus 1. Okay, so that will be the final that'll be the final one. And then we can uh, find our like terms and we can just add or subtract. So we have to the power of 2. So we have 3 of them. So we'll go 3x three, three to the power of 2x. Uh, these two can cancel out. We have 2x here, and then these two can cancel out. So we're left with 2x, and then we have minus 1, plus 1, minus 1. So we have a minus 1, so minus 1. And then this will be the final solution.